Hello there, I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you, welcoming you all uh, to this edition of Wall Panorama. All the biggest international news stories that unfolded this week coming up in the next 30 minutes. First up, the headlines. Death toll in Brazil dam collapse at an iron ore mine increases to at least 100. Hundreds are still missing. Concerns over clearing tons of toxic sludge. Theresa May on a collision course with the European Union after British lawmakers tell the Prime Minister to return to Brussels to renegotiate a Brexit divorce deal. EU rejects plan to change the deal. Venezuela's political crisis reaches a boiling point. The Supreme Court bans opposition leader Guaido from leaving the country, freezes his bank accounts. Guaido looks to win military's support for ousting President Nicolas Maduro. Latest round of China-US trade talks conclude in Washington. Both sides hail major progress. Trump says we'll meet Chinese president to hash out a final agreement by March deadline. And a polar vortex claims that 12 lives as U.S. to Midwest shivers in the grip of its worst cold snap in decades. The top story this week. It is one of Brazil's deadliest ever mining accident. Brazilian rescue teams have recovered bodies of more than 100 people buried after the rupture last week of a dam and with over 250 people still missing. Five people have been arrested, including three staff from the dam company Whale, and are coming on the heels of a deadly 2015 dam collapse at a nearby town at a mine half owned by Whale. The disaster remains unforgivable in the eyes of many Brazilians. UN human rights experts have also called for an official investigation into the disaster. Brazil's town of Brumadino coming together to mourn and remember the victims of damn tragedy. The town was rocked by tragedy when a tailings dam burst sending out a torrent of sludge that left at least 100 dead with another 276 missing and likely dead. I did not lose anyone in my family but uh, I did feel lost. Because Bruma Dino is a family. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone is united. As much as we don't actually know someone who died in disaster, uh, you have seen that person, you pass by them in the street, you meet them on the bus, in the supermarket, at church. The search and recovery efforts have taken their toll on wary firefighters, helicopter pilots and volunteers. Local grave diggers have been working long days, digging the town's new grave with picks and shovels. There are hundreds of people who are missing, family members sometimes using their bare hands to dig amid a heap of dirt and uprooted trees. The focus of this is the search of my brother. He was a farmer and is one of the missing among the pile of wreckage. And my biggest wish is that we find him, because there is a lot of pain, a lot. Three employees of company that own the dam, Brazilian miner Whale SA and two other engineers working on behalf of the company have been arrested. The company says it was doing all it could, offering money to mourners, extra tax payments to local government. But residents in the devastated town of Bromadino have been unmoved, watching in shock and anger as one dead body after another has been pulled from the mud. Why would you build an administrative area under a dam? This was murder. They just buried my niece. My brother-in-law is missing, innumerable colleagues. And then, how many orphans, how many sons, how many fathers, how many friends, how many neighbors? And they come saying that this was an accident. 
The tragedy has enraged many in Brazil and raised fresh questions about Wales' commitment to safety after a similar dam collapsed at a mine it jointly owned over just three years ago. Global Union Industry All, which represents 50 million workers in 140 countries, says multinational whale must be held accountable. The company knew that this very tailing dam that we're speaking of, the one that broke up, uh, there were leakages and there were problems in, in the inspections and the company was aware of it since 2017 and didn't take any action. It could be several days or weeks before many bodies are found as the mud extends several meters deep. Firefighters have to be careful in spots where it is particularly mushy so as not to become trapped themselves. As search and recovery efforts continued, authorities also worked to slow the reddish-brown mud that was heading down a small river with high concentration of iron oxide, threatening to contaminate a much larger waterway that provides drinking water to communities in five of the country's 26 states. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. British Prime Minister is on a collision course with the European Union, returning to Brussels after Parliament told her to renegotiate her Brexit divorce deal. She has to find an alternative to the Irish backstop, which aims to prevent customs checks on the border between Ireland and Northern Ireland. However, EU leaders say the Brexit divorce deal will not be renegotiated. British Prime Minister Theresa May Brexit deal finally won majority support in Parliament by 317 votes to 301. MPs in the House of Commons gave their backing to May's deal, which they rejected earlier this month, providing changes are made to the so-called Irish backstop border issue. The 16 majority for her deal gave May a mandate to return to Brussels to call for a reopening of negotiations. A fortnight ago, this House clearly rejected the proposed withdrawal agreement and political declaration, with just 202 members voting in favour. Tonight, a majority of honourable members have said they would support a deal with changes to the backstop. British lawmakers also voted in favour of the so-called Spellman Amendment, which rejects the United Kingdom leaving the European Union without a withdrawal agreement. Members of Britain's lower house, however, rejected a proposal to give Parliament the power to delay Brexit. The House has also reconfirmed its view that it does not want to leave the EU without a withdrawal agreement and future framework. I agree that we should not leave without a deal. However, simply, simply, simply opposing no deal is not enough to stop it. The government will now redouble its efforts to get a deal that this House can support. May was relieved because it showed that a new Brexit deal will likely to win the critical final vote in British Parliament if changes are made to the Irish border issue. However, here EU played spoil sport for May, saying it was not ready to reopen a deal that took two years in the making. The withdrawal agreement remains the best and only deal possible. The European Union said so in November. We said so in December. We said so after the first meaningful vote in the Commons in January. The debate and votes in the House of Commons yesterday do not change that. The withdrawal agreement will not be renegotiated. Meanwhile, with neither side ready to blink, Theresa May has been warned the EU will settle for a no-deal Brexit rather than abandon the Irish backstop issue. Businesses around the world fear no-deal Brexit is a real possibility as 29th March draws near, the date on which UK is set to leave the EU. Es gibt große Sorgen in der Wirtschaft. There are major concerns among businesses about a non-deal, a hard Brexit at the end of March, that it would lead to significant economic political dislocations between Great Britain and the rest of Europe. Unless a withdrawal agreement is approved or Article 50 that decided on the date of withdrawal is delayed at 23.00 GMT on 29th March, the UK will leave the European Union with no negotiated exit and in a second everything will change. It could become the UK's biggest peacetime emergency in almost a century.
ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Venezuela's political crisis appears to be reaching a boiling point. Opposition leader Juan Guaido, who declared himself interim president, held secret meetings with the military to win support for ousting President Nicolas Maduro. Guaido has been recognized by the US and several Latin American countries as the rightful head of the country. However, major powers Russia and China back Maduro. Venezuela's Supreme Court has also banned opposition leader Guaido from leaving the country and frozen his bank accounts. Power struggle in Venezuela is escalating. Venezuela's Supreme Court banned opposition leader Juan Guaido from leaving the country and froze his bank accounts. The court order coming just as after chief prosecutor announced opening a criminal investigation into Guaido's anti-government activities. Hemos aperturado dicha investigación de carácter We have opened a preliminary investigation. We have come to the Supreme Court to request measures. We demand one, a travel ban to avoid his departure from the country, and two, the ban to alienate and encumber property and real estate. Three, the freezing of his accounts. Contra este ciudadano, permitan. The move heightening tensions as the man challenging President Nicolas Maduro's claim to the presidency presses forward with establishing. A traditional government, Guaido declared himself interim president last week. Apart from the U.S., he's backed by two dozen other countries as well. The U.S. has warned of serious consequences if he's harmed. On Monday, U.S. announced sanctions against Venezuela's state-owned oil firm PDVSA. Also on Tuesday, the State Department issued a travel advisory urging U.S. nationals not to go to Venezuela. that this fight is not about ideology this is a fight between democracy and dictatorship this is a fight between a dictatorship which is totally controlled by the cuban regime against the free world we cannot do this alone we have the main responsibility as a venezuelans but we are asking for the free world to liberate in certain way Venezuela which has been colonized by the Cuban regime so we will continue our fight until we achieve again our democracy and that's why we will continue asking for the international support tensions between the US and Venezuela have reached a new high Maduro accuses the Trump administration of staging a coup against his presidency. Guaido meanwhile seeking to consolidate an interim government under his own leadership. Guaido has thus far managed to avoid arrest and the Supreme Court did not strip him of his legislative immunity. No estoy I am not downplaying a prison threat or I do not want it to be taken like that on our part. Unfortunately, this is a regime that does not respond to the Venezuelan people. The only response is persecution, repression. Despite US support to Guaido, President Nicolas Maduro has major allies too, including Russia, China, Mexico and Turkey. A group of North and South American countries has meanwhile opposed any outside military involvement in the country. Разумеется, любые Any mediatory initiative must be impartial. Whatever format this initiative may take must not be unbalanced, but on the contrary, it must represent a wide circle of international players that influence the government and the opposition. Protests have been held across the country since Maduro began his second term on 10th January. It was during one of the demonstrations last week in Caracas that Guaido declared that he had assumed presidential powers under the constitution and planned to hold fresh elections to end Maduro's dictatorship. UN says at least 40 people are believed to have died and hundreds have been arrested since then. But Maduro has so far shown no signs that he is looking to seize the presidency. 
He was elected last year during a controversial vote in which many opposition candidates were barred from running or jailed. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And the latest round of U.S.-China talks that took place in Washington this week with both the sides saying that important progress has been made. However, no deal has been agreed. But Donald Trump says that he hopes to meet Chinese President Xi Jinping to hash out a final agreement by 2nd of March. Remember, in the month of December last year, the U.S. and China had agreed to 90 days of negotiations in an effort to defuse their escalating trade war which had led to new tariffs on billions of dollars worth of goods. The United States and China held two days of critical trade talks on Wednesday and Thursday. The two sides met next door to White House in the highest level talk since U.S. President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping agreed a 90-day truce in their trade war in December. After the talks, China pledged to purchase an additional 5 million tons on U.S. soya beans, adding that the two sides made important progress. But the tough issues dividing the world's two biggest economies remained unsettled. However, Trump says he hasn't lost hope and that he expects to meet his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, to try to reach a final resolution to the six-month trade standoff. I want to do real things, like the deal with China. I want it to be a real deal. I could do a deal with China where people would say, isn't that wonderful? It's not wonderful. I have to do the real deal. We have to open up China. We're open to them. They have to be open to us. However, U.S. has emphasized that March 2 deadline stands. March 2 is the point at which the U.S. would escalate import taxes on $200 billion in Chinese goods if there was no deal. The penalties are scheduled to jump from 10% to 25%. I've always said that we're taking in billions of dollars and frankly we're creating a lot of industry. Uh, but uh, the rate goes from 10% to 25% on March 1st. The White House has no details on when a presidential level meeting might take place. In December, the US and China agreed to 90 days of negotiations in an effort to defuse their escalating trade war, which had led to the new tariffs on billions of dollars worth of goods. However, the U.S. has also pressed for change on issues such as theft of trade secrets and rules that limit the operations of foreign companies. It is unclear if the two nations can reach a comprehensive trade deal before 2nd March deadline. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the U.S. Midwest is shivering as it is in the grip of uh, its worst cold snap in decades. Some 250 million Americans are experiencing uh, the polar vortex conditions, but southern states such as Florida have escaped the brutal chill. The bitter cold is being caused by a displacement of the polar vortex, a stream of air that normally spins uh, around the stratosphere of the North Pole, but uh, whose current was disrupted. Now, hospitals have been uh, treating patients reporting frostbite as life across the swathe of the nation grinds to a halt. A blast of icy polar air brought dangerously low temperatures to the U.S. Midwest. At least a dozen deaths related to extreme cold weather have been reported in Michigan, Iowa, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin and Minnesota. Cities are all but shutting down across the U.S. Midwest as the region shivers in a deadly cold snap known as polar vortex. Temperatures fell to minus 30 degrees Celsius in Chicago, colder than parts of Antarctica, and to minus 37 degrees in North Dakota. Freezing weather is chilling 250 million Americans. The, the official term is cryosizism, but it's frost quakes are the common term that, that are used across the area. Um, it's basically a situation where you have a rapid drop in temperatures after a situation where the ground may have gotten uh, saturated with some, some rain like we did recently. And as that freezes rapidly, the, the ice starts to expand against objects, the homes, and, and it needs to release some of that pressure. 
states of emergency have been declared in Midwestern Wisconsin, Michigan and Illinois and even in normally warmer deep south states of Alabama and Mississippi. Heavy rain and mountain snow are expected in the west of the country by the weekend. Chicago has seen more than 1500 flights cancelled from its two main airports and rail operator Amtrak has scrapped train services from its hub there. Hundreds of schools as well as colleges and universities have been closed in the affected states. The US Postal Service has called a halt to mail deliveries in parts of 10 states. The weather is frigid, bliss, blizzard like. The wind is ridiculous. Doesn't stop, you can't see anything. Weather officials have warned people to avoid taking deep breaths and to minimize talking if they go outside. Farmers across the Midwest have been taking measures to protect their livestock. Animal rights organization PETA has warned people to bring pets indoors. I would definitely say the elderly, the young, keep an eye on your loved ones, and then also those with psychiatric disease, the homeless population unfortunately is at really high risk, uh, and then also people that use drug and alcohol frequently. Meanwhile, police in the Illinois county of McLean had some fun announcing that Elsa from the Disney movie Frozen had been arrested for bringing sub-zero temperatures. The McLean Police Department posted Elsa's arrest on its Facebook page to warm up people's mood amid the frigid weather. Bureau report Raja Sabhati. And that's it in this edition of a World Panorama. But before we go, take a look at these swimmers who raced in icy cold Danube River in South Germany. More than 1900 swimmers of all ages joined the annual 400 meters race. The temperature of Danube was 2.5 degrees Celsius. But that did not deter the participants, several of whom were wearing neoprene suits, Viking helmets and other colorful costumes. Volunteers doled out hot soup as the swimmers emerged. So take a look at these visuals as I take your leave. I'll see you next week in another edition of World Panorama. Bye-bye.